Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me, Jessica McGovern, International Multi Award winning portrait photographer. And today on this five minute Friday where I explain a tip, tool, technique or topic inside of five minutes, I'm going to be covering off a really, really, really important one for any studio photographers or people who like to do studio photography. Now the reason for this video is basically purely down to the acrylic lick shot video that we previously did. I'll go ahead and link that above now loads and loads and loads of you have tried them and you're all saying what on earth am I supposed to do with all of these reflections so I want to walk through exactly why you get reflections on reflective surfaces in studio and exactly how to avoid them moving forward so this covers things like photographing your wall art for your product guides photographing using acrylic or using glass in the images and also for photographing humans who are wearing glasses all of these situations literally are exactly the same so I'm going to use some maths and then I'm going to do a static demonstration but all of this can be applied in real life to your subjects in studio before we move on, let me just remind you guys to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. The bell icon will give you a notification every single time we upload a YouTube video. We upload every single week on a Friday at 12 noon at UK time. If you find this video useful in any way, shape or form, please make sure that you like it and comment why it was useful and what you're going to implement afterwards. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. So the reason why we stood here at the end of the studio with a whiteboard in the vicinity is because I need to explain something really, really quickly. Don't worry, it won't be boring. And I'm gonna go through that here before we go into a demonstration. Now, everybody who knows that I'm absolutely horrendous at maths, but I did get an A in physics at GCSE. No, it was an A star. It was an A star. And therefore, I should be pretty decent at this kind of stuff. So we'll go onto the whiteboard now. So hopefully you guys can see the full board and I'm just gonna really, really quickly draw what we're gonna be talking about today. So the theory that's in practice in this type of a situation is the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And what that means is that if something comes forward and hits a plane, so if that's the plane and it's coming in at a certain angle, the angle that it comes in at is going to be exactly the same as the angle that it goes back off at. Now, obviously, that's not going to be correct if we got a protractor out and measured it. But you can kind of see that this angle here is pretty much the same as this angle here. And if we were to draw a imaginary kind of straight line out coming out, this angle here would be the same as this angle here. Left handers on whiteboards you feel me, right? So we've got this situation happening in practice and this is the key to avoiding reflections in studio because what you need to do as the photographer who's gonna be sat here with your reflective surface, which is this one down here, is place your lights in a way that that light does not come back and hit your camera in any way, shape or form. Does that make sense? So I've got a light here, Dan's gonna stay there. We've got a semi-reflective surface in the whiteboard and I'm gonna move the light to the point where the angle of incidence is too tight and therefore you should see a big circular reflection in the camera, right? If I move this to change the angle of reflection outwards, moving it further away from the camera round in a circle, then what I've essentially done there is change the angle of reflection. So when you guys saw the reflection in here, this was the angle that we were coming in at, much tighter, and Dan's got it in his camera here. But when I've moved it around here, we're over here. So that angle is therefore much, much larger. Now, if you don't like maths and you don't like physics, then, you know, I'm kind of with you on that, really. So let's look at this in a real life situation so that you can show what you need to do to remove reflections when you see them. So we've moved into a semi-normal setup here. Now you could use this setup if you're photographing your products for your product guide, or you could have a subject in here with a sheet of acrylic. It's all the same situation. You could also have a human stood here with glasses on and it would be the same situation, right? The reflection will always be the same. So it don't worry about what we're doing here. It keeps it nice and still so that you guys can see and understand everything. We also have a continuous light source just in place of a flash today, because 
it keeps it really consistent and super bright so that you can see it. However, again, switch out for your flash, it all works the same. And then we also have our photographer in this instance, which is just locked off on a tripod, but you know, everything's the same. We're recording the screen for you so that you can see everything. So at the moment, inside the uh, camera's screen, the photographer will be able to see a reflective surface with a reflection on it. And the chances are that that reflection is gonna be somewhere around here. And that's because there's an angle of incidence coming from the light, hitting the reflective surface and bouncing off, but it's really tight because these two things are quite close together, right? Your light is very close to your camera. And just because this is angled very slightly backwards, it doesn't really make much of a difference. All that would happen if it was sat perfectly plumb vertical is this reflection is gonna just move up because of physics. So we've got a light hitting, it's a very, very tight angle of incidence and the angle of reflection is very tight back. So how do we emit the reflection? Well, it's quite simple really. And probably you guys will be able to guess it yourselves anyway. All you need to do is change the angle that the light's coming in on. So we're gonna change the angle to make it wider. So probably around there will be more than enough to yep, emit the reflection. So there's no reflection now. And the reason for that is because we've just made that angle so much wider, right? So it's off going off over yonder in that direction and we've emitted the reflection. So if you get a reflection because of your acrylic sheet, because of your glasses, because of your products, whatever it might be, just remember, just move the angle, make the angle bigger or move yourself or the subject so that that angle is distributed in a different way. So in this situation, we've just moved around in a semicircle along that light and emitted that angle of reflection, okay? So that's the first way. The second way we're gonna cover off super, super, super fast. And it's not a situation that we can particularly replicate in here now, but let's say that you had a one light and you wanted to do butterfly lighting and you're getting a reflection. Again, same principle happens just in a vertical format. So if you had butterfly lighting, we've got a video on that, and the light's coming down and hitting the glasses and it's coming back into the camera so you can see the reflection, all you need to do is move that light upwards and backwards and that angle will be made super wide and you won't be able to see a reflection. It's all the same stuff, just physics in a different way. So hopefully that was useful for you guys. Please let me know if it was. Just look at your angles, make the angles bigger and you'll remove any reflections. Work with one light at a time, it's much easier. And if this video is useful for you, please do drop it down in the comments below because it really does help us out. And I'll see you next week for another five minute Friday.